Welcome to Messy Church. I'm Matt, if you don't know me, I'm the, the priest in charge at St. Leonard's in Lexden. And this edition of Messy Church, well, we could have called it uh, a messy a rainbow. We're calling it Messy New Beginnings. I'm going to think about Noah. Now, I expect you probably know the story of Noah very well, and we will be reminded about that story. And we often think about all the animals, because animals are cool and exciting. But at the end of Noah's story, uh, there's a really important thing that we learn about the rainbow. And there've been lots of rainbows around us over these last few months. Rainbows to say thank you to the NHS. Rainbows as a kind of sign of hope. And did you know that the rainbow as a sign of hope comes from Noah's story in the Bible. So all our crafts, our singing, our stories are about that uh, this week. Uh, thank you to the many people that contribute to this. Uh, enjoy wherever you are and it's wonderful to have you with us. Let the mess commence. That's about it. Oh, hello. You've caught me. I'm um, I'm actually playing with some of my grandchildren's toys. They won't mind because we often play with them together. But um, I have a special reason for playing with them today. And um, if I show you one or two things, you've probably guessed what it is I'm playing with. Uh, this is a bit of a clue, isn't it? But before I begin the story, I want you to see if you can see what it is about this, a boat, and me, that's got something in common. Look carefully. Now, I'm not a boat. And I don't flute. And I'm not made of wood. And I don't think I'm this shape. So, what could it be? Well, the boat is blue. And my t-shirt is blue. Is there anything else? Have you spotted it? The rainbow. I've got a rainbow on my t-shirt. And there's a rainbow here on the boat. So... That means the story must be about a rainbow. But I hear you say, no, 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 it's about Noah and his ark and the animals. Well, it is, but I want you to remember that the rainbow was actually one of the most important, if not the most important parts of the whole story. Now, you may know the story, so I'll go over it fairly quickly, it so happened that this happened years and years and years before even Jesus was born. And a lot of people were living on the world, in the world, and they were a bit selfish. They weren't very nice to each other. They didn't listen to one another, and they certainly didn't listen to God. But there was one man, and I've got him here, and this man's name, you probably know, was Noah. And this is Noah. And Noah was a very good man. He was kind, he was helpful, and he listened to God. Not only did he listen to God, but he did whatever God asked him to do. And he had a wife, and he also had three children. And his three children, his sons, they all had wives as well. So they were quite a big family. And one day, God said to Noah, now, no, I've got a special job for you. You see, in a little while, there's going to be a lot of rain. Not just an ordinary rainstorm, a lot of rain. And there will be so much rain that the earth will become flooded. There will be no dry land left. The trees will be covered, the mountains will be covered, and a lot of people are going to die. But, said God, you are a good man and I want you to do a special job. I want you to build a boat, which is called an ark. I want you to build the boat 
so big, and he even told Noah what the measurements had to be, so big that on board you can put two of every animal and bird that lives on the land and, and, and in the skies and in the seas. And the reason for that was that when the flood went down, the animals would be able to go off and have babies and there and then would be more, more elephants, more tigers, more lions and so on. So the first thing that Noah had to do was persuade his sons to help him build the boat. Because actually Noah was quite an old man. So he asked his sons to help him. And I think to start with, his sons thought, got a bit mad, hasn't he? Building a boat. Are you sure? But he was persistent. He said, yes, God has asked me to do this and I must do it. And so for the next few weeks and months, all you could hear was hammer, 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 saw, 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 bang, 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 until eventually this beautiful boat was built. Now, when I was a teacher, I took my class out onto the playground at our school and we measured the size of the actual ark. We took a metre stick and we converted the measurements from the Bible into metres and it was so many metres long and so many metres wide and so many metres high and you know we couldn't even fit it on the playground we had to crouch onto the field as well so that tells you how huge this boat was and Noah's instructions were that it has, was to have a big hold a big place at the bottom for the, for the animals to go and it was also to have two stories and a roof. So Noah had to build two stories and a roof. Let's put the roof on. This is the fun part, isn't it, of playing with toys. You can build things. So you put the roof on and then when it was ready, <laughs> well, you'd think that's the easy bit. Oh no, the, the easy bit was building the boat, yes, but the hard bit was getting the animals to go on. They had to push and they had to pull and they had to coax them into the ark. But eventually they all went inside and I don't know how many different animals there were, but there were always two of everything at least. And some of them, some of them were up on the deck, and some of them went inside. They had to have a very tall roof for the giraffes. But soon, all the animals were safely inside. Oh, I don't think they fell over. I'm not doing this very well, am I? And eventually, Noah had to put the door in place. And the wonderful thing was, it fitted perfectly. It fitted perfectly. Oh, should we put these inside as well? I think they're better. Well, they'll, of course, they could swim away and come. Back. So there was Noah and and his wife and his children were all safely inside. And then when they shut the door, they waited and they waited and they waited. And it was some time before the rain began. And when it started, it was just a light. until the storm was so bad they couldn't hear each other speak. And there was thunder, and there was lightning, and the rain came down, and it covered all the earth. And gradually, the water rose up and up and up, and eventually the boat went up and up and up with it. It went higher than the trees. It went higher than the mountains. And soon, all you could see was water and all you could hear was rain and the waves and the thunder and it was such such a dangerous journey that they were safe inside the ark 
Now it rained and it rained and it rained for a lot of days. But gradually, gradually, the rain subsided and eventually it stopped. What a relief. Noah was so thrilled, he and his wife went out on deck to have a look. Oh dear. All they could see was water. They still couldn't see any land. They couldn't see any trees. They couldn't even see any mountains. And it took a long, long time for the water to get lower and lower and lower. And one day, Noah sent out a dove, sent out a little white dove, thinking that that would tell him if there was anywhere for the dove to land. And he showed he, the dove flew off, but he came back. And when Noah saw him, he realised he wouldn't have come back if there'd been somewhere to land. And then Noah sent out another bird, and the same thing happened. The bird just circled round and round, and didn't find anywhere to land. But gradually, the water went down and down and down. And one day, Noah sent out another dove. Off it flew, off it flew. And this time, when it came back, I don't know if you can see, it had something in its beak. It had a freshly plucked olive branch not a very big one. I've got one here. This is a branch from an olive tree. Now the important thing about it being freshly plucked was it meant that it wasn't just something that was lying on the water that had broken off. It showed that the level of the water was now below the tree. So the dove was able to pull this branch off and bring it back to Noah. So there it is, an olive branch. And we use an olive as a sign of peace these days. So that's nice, isn't it? That it was an olive branch. Well, the next time Noah sent the dove off, you can probably guess what happened. It didn't come back. And that told Noah that the dove had found somewhere to rest. There was dry land. But still, Noah left it a little while longer before finally... He opened the door, got a bit waterlogged, I think, but eventually he managed to open the door and the animals were able to come out. And as God had planned, because there were two of each animal, they could go off and they could have babies and the world would be full of people again and animals. But, you know, that's not the end of the story. Because when Noah realised that the boat and the animals and all his family were safe and sound. He went down on his knees and he thanked God for saving them. He thanked God for keeping them safe, keeping them well. And you know what happened next? Noah looked up into the sky and there in the sky was a beautiful red. Rainbow, where are we? Rainbow. Like the one I'm wearing. And like the one that possibly you've got in your window. Because the rainbow has become a sign. It's a sign of God's promise. His promise was that never again would there be such a dreadful flood that it would cover the whole earth. Yes, we still do have floods, but there's never been a flood to cover the whole earth. And the rainbow was the sign that God had made an agreement with Noah never to let that happen again. And the National Health Service, the NHS, the people, the doctors and the nurses who work in our hospitals, they have got this as a sign of love and peace and above all, hope. It's a sign that although we're going through very dark times with coronavirus, with a lot of people being very ill and a lot of people dying, they're very dark times. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. 
when all the coronavirus is eliminated, when perhaps we've got a vaccine, then there will be new life again and there will be light. And it was the same when Noah went through that terrible dark storm, but when they got out, they saw the light. They saw the light shining through the raindrops and the raindrops made a beautiful pattern in the sky. And you'll hear more about rainbows and how they're made in the rest of Messy Church. So I really hope that you've enjoyed the story. Now, I'm going to put it all away again so that when my grandchildren come, it will be there for them to play with. But I'm so glad you could join me and I hope you enjoyed the story too. I'll see you a bit later in Messy Church. Okay, bye-bye. Hello, I'm going to show you today how to make this lovely rainbow arc paper plate craft. So we have this lovely wooden arc with the rainbow over the top, which is like a little pocket that you can then put on your wall or on your notice board. And inside the pocket, you can put the names of people that you're worried about or things that you'd like to pray about and keep them safe in there. So I've got this is one of my friends who's very poorly at the moment. So I've got his name and his family in there. Then I've got everyone who's worried about losing their jobs at the moment. I've put that in there. And I've got all our doctors and nurses and carers and teachers and other key workers. A little prayer that they'll be kept safe at the moment. So I've put that in there as well. And if you wanted to, you could even make little figures or pictures of people who can peep out over the top of the ark to go in your pocket. So it's really easy to make. I've used paint for mine, but you can use felt tips or crayons or whatever you like really, just to get some nice colours. But paint is great because actually all the colours start to blend into each other a little bit like a real rainbow. So it does look really good. So let's get started. So you need two paper plates, but one will be cut in half. So you've got one whole one, one half. This will be the arc, which when it's all painted and dried, you'll, you can glue together just using normal glue, or you can ask a grown-up to staple it round for you, which is easier actually if you've got a stapler. 
and you need to make sure that you paint the side of the half paper plates so that when you put them together you've got that pocket so you don't want them to sit inside you want that way round so I'll start painting this with my lovely brown paint to look like the arc There we go, so I've painted my arc half of the, of the project, so I'll put that over there to dry and I will start doing the rainbow. Now whatever you're using, whether it's paint or pens or whatever, make sure you do the rainbow so it goes nice way round the plate so that when you put the arc on, the two things touch and you don't get a little gap of white. Right, so I'm going to start painting my rainbow. So red first doesn't matter if you don't have all the exact colours of the rainbow. I want it to be nice and colourful. Yep. There we go. So one of the nice things about rainbows is, even if you're not very good at painting, like me, it's really easy to do, isn't it? Everyone can recognise what we've done just from the colours and the, the shape. Such a well-known symbol. And then what I'm going to do before I stick the arc on the front to make the pocket, I'm going to write a message in the middle here to remind us what this, what this project is all about. I'm going to write, God keeps his promises and then when you put things in your pocket you'll always remember that won't you so we've heard about in the other st the stories that we've had today in the other crafts we've heard about this theme of how the rainbow is that symbol of how God is faithful and keeps his promises to us so there we go and all that's left to do is to stick the arc onto the front now I'm not going to do this one yet because the paint hasn't dried so I'll, I'm going to wait till that's dried but here's the one I made earlier so you should have all these things at home hopefully and I hope you enjoy making it bye oh hello welcome to my laboratory hello it's so nice to see you today my name is Professor Brainstorm and I am in Vienna working at the university and my department is the Department of Light. I am in charge of it, so obviously I'm a very, very important person. But I, I still have time to welcome you here today, even though you cannot be here in person. It's very nice to see you. Uh, I received a message from my cousin uh, in Colchester and she said that um, you were doing a very untidy church or something today and um, I, I didn't read, oh, oh, oh no, she said it was messy church, uh, yeah, we don't have messy churches here, we always keep everything very, very clean and tidy, so you do need to go and tidy that up. When you have time so that you don't have messy churches anymore um but but anyway that's by the way but of course in the laboratory we are always very very clean and tidy we have to take a lot of precautions to make sure that everything is still um anyway um so my work at the, the university is very much um studying light and i think that fits in very well with what you are doing in your untidy church because um, you are doing new beginnings. Now, 
us scientists would have nothing to do if God had not created such a fantastic world. And we spent all our time trying to understand how God created all these wonderful things that we have around us. So um, that is where I'm going to help you today, uh, because I know that you are looking at the story of Noah and the flood and of course the rainbow, which is so important in it. Now, I think we need to know just a little bit about rainbows before we start. So I understand that you, you, know, you have probably done some of this part of school, so uh, just, you know, and the volume down if you know it already. But anyway, um, you know that sunlight actually is white light and it is made up actually of lots of other colors that have combined together to make a white light. Now, when light passes from one medium to another of a different density, for instance, from air to water, then the light bends, and this is called refraction of light. It's a very important word. So, when white light is split up, when passing from air to water, then we can see all the individual colors, which is what happens when there is a rainbow. So, in nature, God's wonderful creation, what happens is that when the sunlight is refracted on entering a droplet of water, because you know that rainbows are made when the sun is shining and it is raining at the same time, then it is reflected inside the droplet of water and then it is refracted again on leaving the droplet of water. And that is when the beautiful rainbow is formed. Now, I can see who are wondering why the red is always at the top in a big arc and the violet is always at the bottom. This is because the colors all have different wavelengths. And the red has a very long wavelength and the violet has the short wavelength. So, sorry to bore you with all of that. You know it's very easy. Uh, now, listen. The experiment we are going to do today is going to be to try to make a rainbow at home. Now, one thing I must say to you, which is really, really important, is that when we are using sunlight, I'm sure you know this, you must never, ever look directly at the sun. Now, we are also going to be using a mirror. Now, the mirror will be reflecting the sun, so do not look directly at the reflection of the sun from the mirror and then our eyes will be perfectly safe so that is very important so it would be good if you had an adult to help you with this now you need some really really complicated things to do this experiment <laughs> no i'm only joking you don't need complicated things at all all you need to have is a white piece of paper mirror and a clear glass. Now it could be a glass. This is a bowl as you can see. Now I only have a bowl because my mirror has to fit inside the glass and it would not fit inside a glass so I get a bowl instead. But if you have got a thin mirror then you can just use an ordinary drinking glass. <laughs> right now you will also need to put some water inside the bowl. So there we are. So that is our rain, you see. Now, the other thing that we need to have is sunlight. Now, this is where you have to be really, really patient because this only works if you have some strong sunlight. You could try doing it with a flashlight, but it really doesn't work terribly well. Now, let's imagine that the sun is shining, which it is a little bit out there today, but not enough to do this. Uh, and then you put your mirror inside the bowl at an angle. Now, I'm going to turn you around so that you can see that a little bit. I have a bowl, I have my mirror at an angle, and then I'm going to hold the paper 
as I will need to move the paper in the direction of where my rainbow might appear. Now, I will need to make sure that the mirror catches the sunlight. And then, if everything cuts well, the rainbow should appear very clearly on the paper. You will have to fill in that a little bit to write yourself. But in science, nothing is easy. So, uh, you will have to spend a little bit of time doing that. But can I tell you, it is definitely worth it when you have done it. Now, I have made a little video to show you one that I made when the sun was shining a little bit strong. So, you will be able to see how successful I was. You will probably make a much better rainbow than I made. You look very, very intelligent there. I, I feel that you will all grow up to be scientists one day and, and come and work with me, but, but not, not just at the moment. Really. Um, now, it's been so nice meeting you, and perhaps one day you will come back into my laboratory again and maybe come back together again. So, have a wonderful time and see if you can grow and make your own rainbows. carefully at this picture. You might recognise it because it was painted at Flatford, but that's not why I'm showing it to you. I want you to watch very carefully and see if the picture changes at all. Ah, can you see? A rainbow has appeared in the sky. Now, I promise you it's not the television, it's not a moving picture, it's a picture that hangs on my wall. And it was painted by my father. And my father didn't put a rainbow in the sky. So how have I managed to put a rainbow in the sky? Can you see it? All the beautiful colors, red and orange and yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. Now that must have been a surprise for Noah when he saw a rainbow appear in the sky. Now, if you watch the rest of Messy Church, I'll try and explain to you how I did it. I'm gonna make it disappear again. Back to normal. See you later. And I managed to put a rainbow onto those pictures. And the way that I did it was I stood by my garden door and I waited for the sun to shine and then I held up this very special piece of glass. It's called a prism. 
and it's made in such a way that all the sides are the same size and if you look at the end you can see it's a triangular prism because it's a shape like a triangle and by holding my pr prism up to the light I was able to trap the light from the sun in my prism and it very cleverly broke all the white light into seven colours. It's a miracle, isn't it? The light that we see in the garden or in our house is just, well, it's sort of not a colour, is it? It's white. But when it passes through something like that, it breaks it up into different colours. And another way you can see that happen is if you've got an old CD or a DVD, and I don't know how well you can see it, but if you look at it, you can turn it and you get the reflection of light breaking up into all its colours. I'm going to need that in a minute. And finally, you've all done this, I'm sure. Do you remember the bubble blessing we used to have at Messy Church? There was a bubble machine, wasn't there? Well, I haven't got a bubble machine, but I've made my own bubbles and I've just mixed up some um, washing up liquid. But you could use some shampoo or something like that. And when I blow a bubble, that wasn't such a good one, was it? Let's hope I can get a really good one. Perhaps I didn't mix it enough. Give it a good old froth. And I'm catching it. And if I turn it, let's make it bigger. Look, if you catch it in the bubble, you can see lots and lots of different colours. And when we have a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow is when the sun shines on a raindrop because we only ever get rain rainbows when it's been raining followed by the sun so my bubble is a bit like a raindrop and when the sun shines through it you can see all the colors now if you can't see mine very well perhaps you could ask somebody if you can make some bubble mixture and then watch the colors in the bubbles because they're so beautiful so we can make rainbows by trapping the white light and watching it spread out into all its colours. But I'm going to show you today how you can take all those colours and turn them back into white light. Now that's got to be a miracle, hasn't it? But this is how we can do it. First of all, you need to know the colours of the rainbow in the right order. Now, this is the right order. It's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now, when I was at school, we were told a special little rhyme to remember. And the rhyme was Richard of York, Richard Arthur Richard of York, gave battle in vain. Now, what does that mean, you might ask me. So, why don't you make up your own little way to remember? So, you could have perhaps some um, rainbows, half oh, rainbows, oh, over, rainbows over your garden. Rainbows over your garden bring in visitors. Rainbows over your garden bring in visitors. Rainbows red over orange, your yellow, and so on. But you could make up another one. It could be um, running over your goat. Now we shouldn't run over a goat, should we? Um, running over your gate. Well, look, I'll leave you to make some up at home on your own. But that's the order you need. So I've got some coloured pencils ready in that order. I'm using coloured pencils and not felt pens because felt pens are a little bit too bright. 
as you'll see in a minute. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to take some paper and we need to make two white circles of paper like that. So I've got a piece of paper, I've folded it over, so I'm going to cheat. And then I'm going to take my CD and I'm going to draw around my CD like that. And because I've done it on a piece of folded paper, this is the quickness, I'm going to very quickly cut it out and I will end up with two circles the same size. So here we go. And you might need a bit of help with this. I'm doing it rather quickly so they might not be perfect circles. But there we go. So I've got two circles. Now, the paper's got a bit wet because some of my bubbles burst on my nice mat. Two circles. Now, the next bit is really tricky because we're going to divide our circle into the same number of sections as there are colours in the rainbow. And do you remember how many colours that was? Seven. And it's not easy to divide a circle into seven. And I thought about how I could do this. And then I remembered that a 50 pence piece has seven edges. So what I did was I took my pencil. The first thing you need to do is put a dot right in where you think the centre is. You kind of have to guess or estimate. Then if you put your 50 pence piece right over the dot, right in the middle of your piece of paper, and then where the edges of the 50 pence piece are, you put a little dot. And you should have seven little dots. And when you've got seven little dots, it should look like that. Can you see? And then you take your ruler and from the centre, you draw from the centre dot through the other dot right to the edge. So you go round and round and round and you should end up with a piece of paper that's got seven different sections on it. And so we go round. I won't do it all because you can see what I mean. OK, so when we've got seven sections, we take, we need the same on the back. So we've got two card, two pieces of paper with seven sections on it. Then we start with, what's the first colour? Um, rainbows, R, R. Rainbows, so I take my red and I'm going to colour in one section of my piece of paper in red. I'm not going to do it all because it will take too long. There's red and then I take rainbows over O orange so i'll do my orange and round we go and yellow and green and i end up with two pieces of paper like this with all the colors of the rainbow in order then we take a piece of card so it's a bit stiff and we have to paint uh, glue one of our pieces of paper onto the card so I've already done one, I'm very quickly going to do the other side and there we have it. So piece of card and two rainbows. Now the next bit's a bit tricky and you'll probably need some help. I've got a special cutting mat so I'm going to be okay and I'm using something which I think is called a braddle, it's out of my screwdriver box. And I'm going to make two holes either side of the centre. But you do need some help with this. You can do it with a pair of scissors, but you do need some help. And then you end up with a card with two holes through the middle. And you need to be able to see through the holes because in a moment you're going to take some string. Um, if you pull your string out to about that long, about stretching my arm out, it's about that long. And then I'm going to take my string and I'm going to post it through the first hole and I'm going to bring it out, post it back through the second hole and bring it out and I will end up with something that looks like this. So I've got my string and I've got my pieces of card. 
And can you see all the colours on each side? Now this is where the magic happens. I'm going to twist my piece of card round and round and round, round and round and round, until the string starts to ravel up. And then I'm going to pull. It takes a little while to get it going, so just be patient. I have to get it going again. And we pull and we pull and we wait for the skin, the string to ravel and unravel. Now, if I turn it round, can you see? Can you see all the colours are blended together? And they're no longer all their separate colours. They're white. Let's try the other side. Can you see? All those colours have mixed together and become white again. Now that is a miracle, isn't it? So now we have a lovely rainbow spinner and we can see now how all the colours of the rainbow put together can become white. All part of God's wonderful creation. It's a real miracle. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that and I know there's lots and lots of activities today all to do with rainbows. But I hope you'll find making bubbles or looking through looking at CDs or maybe making a spinner. Bye for now. It's time for us uh, to pray. And uh, maybe you've uh, made one of these amazing uh, rainbow arc paper plate thingies. Uh, it might still be wet, so you might not be able to pick it up, but you might be able to see it. Or you might pause this video and watch it back, this bit, uh, once it is dry. But I thought we could probably use this to help us uh, pray. So I'd find a quiet spot somewhere, inside or outside, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe you could uh, bring this with you. And you might have already filled it with your, your prayers for things that you're worried about, people that you want to uh, uh, pray for. Uh, that's one way you can use this to help you pray. Or maybe you could go through each colour of the rainbow and pray about a different thing and a different person uh, when you get to each colour. So I'm going to try and do that now, but I'd like you to do it for your own colours. And I'm afraid I always get the colours of the rainbow wrong. Uh, so we'll just have to see how I do. OK, so I'm going to start praying. So I'm looking at the red colour. And I want to thank God for all those people who are looking after us uh, at the moment. For all those who work at schools those who work in hospitals, in fact everybody who works in our town uh, to help look after other people. I pray that God will bless them and protect them. And then uh, there's a yellow colour here. I'm going to pray uh, thank you God uh, for the sunshine which is outside uh, today and for the beauty of much of the world around us. Help us to look after uh, nature and to value it and look after it as you would want us to. And then we get to uh, the green colour. God, I pray for all those who are feeling unwell or feeling sad. May they know something of your rainbow in their lives. May they look up and see hope and feel better and know that you love them. And then come to the blue colour. God, I want to pray for all the people who are in 
and messy church. For all those watching at home, wherever they are, especially those who have just gone back to school or play group who are doing something uh, different I might be a little bit nervous may they know uh, the hope that you show us in your rainbow your promise uh, to love us at all times and then uh, I know I've given the colors the wrong names <laughs> uh, the purple color on the inside of the rainbow. Our Father God, we pray for ourselves, for those who look after us at home. We ask your blessing and uh, protection on us. And we thank you for the love that we are shown by others and the love we show to them. So perhaps you can make up your own uh, prayers for the colours or use the prayers that you put into the ark and Kirsty uh, is going to lead us in our messy church Lord's Prayer. First of all we start with our hands together. Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen and if you'd like to make a video of yourself doing the lord's prayer so that everybody else can see you please do so send it to me and we'll post it on the website okay until next time bye bye i have all the colors of the rainbow in my garden learned a lot about uh, Noah and about rainbows and about how rainbows appear in the sky about prisms and water and light but in the Bible we read that rainbows remind us of something really important and that's the bit of Noah's story that I think is really helpful at the moment when we're going back to school and play school when things are a little bit different around us. And this is what it reminds us. It reminds us of God's promise to Noah and to us to always be faithful. And so after a big storm, might be a scary storm, when we look up in the sky and see the colours of the rainbow, we can have hope and know that God loves us. And this is a a little song that you can sing along with uh, that reminds us that the rainbow is a sign that God keeps his promise uh, to love uh, you and me and all people just as he told Noah. It's an old tune that you might recognise so you can join in I hope. When you spy a new rainbow, there is one thing you should know. God told Noah, look up high, see my bow across the sky. I keep my promise, I keep my promise, I keep my promise, the rainbow tells me so. I will love you all your life Through the good times, through the strife 
No, you can rely on me. No, my love is yours for free. I keep my promise. I keep my promise. I keep my promise. The rainbow tells you so. And so, by the blessing of God Almighty and the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with uh, you and all whom you love this day and always. Amen. <laughs>